Before the pod gets started, go ahead and leave us a rating on Spotify, Apple Music or wherever else you listen to the pod. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to the Yellow Squared podcast. It is myself, Ned, and I am, of course, joined by my co-host and brother, James. Good morning, James. Welcome back to the pod. Thanks, mate. How are you doing? It's very nice. I've been um, upgraded to co-host as well as brother. Well, yeah, I thought that I'd what finally... a time to be alive. <laughs> I'd finally give you a little bit of a promotion. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, I'm doing very, very well. Um, we are now five unbeaten. Um, Flying. <laughs> the game was probably one of the most boring games of football I've ever seen in my life yesterday. Um, but we'll mm. get into uh, get into that uh, in a few moments. Um, but yeah. We're five and beaten. I think that's got to be the most po- positive thing, right? Um, about the moment uh, at yeah. Watford. Obviously, the performances have been somewhat improving. I feel like yesterday was a little bit of a step backwards. Um, mm-hmm. but at the same time, never felt like we were going to concede. Never felt like we would lose. Um, I just didn't think we had enough to get ourselves over the line. We could really have done with a, a sort of a Ken Semmer rocket to uh to give <laughs> us the three points again. Yeah. So, James, before we get into the Huddersfield chat, I think we would like to start um, a new segment on the podcast. And we haven't done that in a while, have we? No, we haven't, no. So this will involve me. Well, currently it's me this week. I will be, yeah. I've selected myself a Watford player. Um, they can be a Watford player from any generation. Um just sort of somebody that's a bit of a legend. Uh, you know, we're not quite at the uh, the Gabby Agbon Lahore loan uh, <laughs> from 2001 yet. Um, but I've selected a player think. and I've got three clues which will be uh, sort of put throughout the pod. And uh, this week, James, it is your turn to guess who the player is. Yeah. Have I explained everything right? I think so, yeah. So uh, it's... Uh... The idea for it is uh, effectively for, for us and for the, the listeners at home or on their way to work, just to have a little bit of a, uh, little bit of a guess as to, to the name of the Watford player. And what we're going to do is we're going to play against each other throughout the season. And then by the end of the season, we're going to total up all of the points that we've got and we will crown, crown the rightful uh, winner of the uh, the mystery what for player section on the podcast. Mm. Um, effectively, uh, in terms of rules, um, they have to, the the individual has to have played for Watford at any point in their career. They have to have made a senior appearance. Mm. Um, we're going to have three guesses uh, throughout an episode. If by some miracle the individual guesses right on the first go, you get three points. Second go, two points, and final go, one point. If you completely mess it up and you don't get it right, you don't get any points for that week. And we're going to go back and forth uh, each episode. Um, and that's how we're going to run it. And if you uh, guess it right at home, um, then, you know, you can just have some self-esteem. Yeah, yeah. Maybe tweet us. Tweet us how many points you get at the end of the season. We'd uh, we'd be, yeah. we'd love to know. We'd love to know. And also, I think yeah. we've got to mention Italy. that uh, whenever there's a guest on the podcast, um, which hopefully yeah. there will be soon, bit of a little bit of a spoiler. Yep. Um but yeah, we will be uh, we'll be challenging them as well, so that should be uh, right. some good fun for the podcast. So James, if I want yep. to start with my first clue, um, go for it. So this player made his debut on the 29th of August 2011. Oh God, okay. And that is all you're getting. That is all you're getting. Oh, oh my God, debut. Yeah. Um... Debut. Debut 29th of August 2011. So that's the 11 12 season. It is indeed. That was the, oh, that was the, um, that was the Sean, that was a Sean Dyche season, it was wasn't Sean it? Uh, Sean Dyche season with that wonderful kit, 29th of August 2011. The Birder kit. The Birder kit. Oh my God. Uh, okay. Uh, I, just because what a cult hero this guy was at the time, uh, Prince Boabin. That is incorrect. Oh. Incorrect, yeah. So 
that automatically <laughs> puts you down to two points. That <laughs> didn't give me much to go on there, but fair enough. No, All right. no. well, it's supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to be difficult. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah okay, you'll, get, you'll get some more clues throughout the podcast. Um, oh, which right, we'll hopefully, by the third one, if you don't get it, then you will be <laughs> kicking yourself, I think. Yeah, right, fine. James, we'll move on to Huddersfield away. Oh, uh, yeah. I think if we could sum it up in a word, I think I would say bored. How about you? Uh, wet. Yeah. It's probably how I'd describe that one. Yeah. Um, uh, it was really, did you really watch... flat, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you watch the game, mate? Did you? I did indeed watch the game. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I'll never get those 97 minutes back. Um, because yeah. he decided to implement the EFL rules uh, on a one week that no one wanted there to be ex- extra minutes of added time. Uh, yeah, so I watched the game. I thought we were fairly in control the whole time, to be honest. Um, you know, the, t- the possession stats would come up every now and again, and it would be like we'd have 75% possession compared to Huddersfield's 25 Um we pretty much dominated them the whole game. Um, not really in terms of like creating chances and whatnot, but in terms of just basically having the ball and not letting them have a sniff of anything. I never felt like we were going to concede, which is always a bonus when, um, you know, on the podcast last week, we were saying that we uh, could potentially concede quite a few more goals if we don't sort of sure up the defence, especially from set pieces. But... I don't really think they had many chances really at all, um, which uh, mm. affected Dan Backman apart from when their striker closed him down on, on the ball. But yeah, other than that, nothing nothing came from Huddersfield. I, I really, th- <laughs> when I saw their formation before the game started, a 5-4-1, I just automatically thought they're not even here to play football. They're just here to get a point. And to be fair to them, that's what they did. I think they were just sort of trying to yeah. stop conceding because I think they've conceded a lot of goals recently. So they're just trying to stop the rot a little bit. And uh, what better team to do it against than Watford? So yeah, mm. anything to add to uh, anything to add to that, James? No, I mean we'll, we'll get into some of the finer points as as we go. But uh, yeah, I completely agree with you. It it was um, if if we're getting frustrated watching watching Watford um, sort of having lots of the ball and moving it around relatively comfortably and and just sort of failing in the final third, I really sympathise for those Huddersfield Town fans oh, that yeah. have to kind of kind of watch that every week because, well, yeah, I mean Ismail turned around and after the game and said it's the first time we've come up against that style of play this season. Um, I think to call it style of play is is a bit. <laughs> um, yes generous to them yeah uh they really offered very very little um just a number of times that it was just a, a clearance that just went straight back to hoot and yeah, and, yeah, and sierra alta and we just we could just start again which i think sums up the frustration that i had definitely that i had come the full-time whistle um uh, uh yesterday so yeah um i just wanted to start though mate uh happy with the starting 11 there's kind of one obvious point that I'd, I'd like to draw out but w- when you saw the lineups for yesterday what did you think uh, yeah I, I was fairly excited uh, with the starting 11 I think it's uh it's a team that we're kind of becoming familiar with obviously no Kone due to being late to a team meeting um which I presume that was the point, the point yeah <laughs> that was the point yeah um and to be honest, I think I'm getting a bit frustrated with uh, with this sort of, sort of strict rule implementation stuff because obviously yeah. it, it makes no difference now given that it, this is like the fourth player this season already to have been dropped mm. or dropped to the bench or dropped from the whole squad for being late to something. So clearly there's no sort of incentive to not do it because it even with the... Uh, even with the sanctions in place, that there's people are still doing it. To me, it just seems a bit stupid when, you know, he's played yeah. really well for the past two, three games with Kone, Livermore, Kambe in the midfield. Then all of a sudden, you're adding Chak Vitaza, which is a completely different style of player. And yeah. to be honest, I didn't think Chak Vitaza did nearly enough yesterday, given that he, you know, has so nice. much creative flair. When the ball comes into him, like, like you said, at times, Huddersfield were just kicking the ball 
as far as I could down the pitch, like you know, like you would in the 85th minute when you're trying to defend a lead. They were just yeah, kicking, it was attack versus defense. They were yeah. just kicking the ball down the field, letting us restart, basically just letting us play football. I couldn't believe that we couldn't even muster one chance. And I appreciate it is very difficult when there are 11 men behind the ball and they're set up very deep, very very little gaps to exploit. But I just thought. Chet Vatadze didn't do enough to create himself a yard and have a shot or create himself a yard and move the ball on quickly. Um, I just felt like it was going side to side a bit and then we couldn't really find the ball in, into the box for either Bio or, mm. or Rajovic. But yeah, I think that is the kind of starting eleven that we would uh, we would expect, expect to uh, to see at the moment anyway. Um, obviously, there's, yeah. there's quality on the bench uh, with the likes of Loser and and Martins mm. and, and those kind of players. But I think on, on current form, you can't not play people like Semmer and Asprey because they're, you know, they're, they're playing so well at the moment um, on, on recent mm. form anyway. But yeah, I was happy with the, uh, the starting 11. How did you think about the, uh, about it? Yeah, I was, I was pleased with it as well. And um, I was pleased with, uh, the fact that Ngaki kept his place in the side. I know we spoke a, a quite a bit about that yeah, um, yeah. in the last episode. So pleased that he kept his, his place in the side. I'm, I'm just, and I will come back to Ngaki in a minute because I wanted to pick up on the Kone point. Um, because I also agree with you that um, it's getting frustrating. But I think for me, it's important that, that Ismail doesn't compromise now. Uh, on this policy uh, because it's it's important that if he is trying to set down a a discipline a mindset that you are just you are not late there is no excuses for for being late to team meetings i mean some of the nonsense uh, was it andrew french watford observer he said that you know people are people are being late for two o'clock team meetings when they've been like at the training ground since 10 a.m you know there's yeah. stuff where that you know it's not acceptable yeah, i do think it's bizarre like you're a professional footballer. All you do is play football and go to meetings. Like realistically, yeah. your job it, is just to show up. Yeah, it's 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 not hard, is it? And I, my my counter to it. So I know you said you're not, but you're becoming increasingly less of a fan of it. I am still a fan of it, and I I think it it's important. And and the one thing that we don't know, and we will never know because there's no data, or you know, no one's going to come out and, and explain it. Is we've got no, we don't know as fans how bad it was before Ismail rocked up, no. and before Ismail came into the job. We don't know how late if people were turning up late all the time. We, do, you know, we don't know, we don't know any of that. So the fact that it's sort of public now and it's being called out, um, it will naturally look worse than than it would have done sort of two three seasons before because yeah. we just we just don't know that. So. For me, at the moment, the most important thing that we can do is just trust the the manager, and um, and we should acknowledge that you know that players turning up late for meetings um, is unacceptable. And I think, am I right in in saying that the the rules are if you were going to be in the starting eleven, you get dropped to the bench, and if you're on the bench, you just get dropped completely. Yeah, yeah, I think they are the rules, which kind of works for me. So. That's kind of my take on the Kone situation. And it, I agree that Shaq Vatadze didn't take his opportunity yesterday. It was a game where you needed that kind of direct, skillful player mm. to just unlock unlock the Huddersfield defence. And we didn't really see enough about see enough of that. And I think if I'm Shaq Vatadze, um, I'm waking up this morning and I'm thinking I didn't take my chance because I can't see him starting against um, against Huddersfield against Rotherham on, on Saturday. Yeah. Now I think Kone comes back into it because Kone did a couple of things yesterday when he came off the bench that I just liked. You know, he was willing to try and take the ball past the midfield. Mm. He did have a couple of shots which were wayward, but when you're playing uh, a team that are so compact defensively. Um, you need to keep them guessing and keep the defence honest, right? So the fact that he's running at defenders, you're going to commit people onto you, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. And the fact that you're then willing to take shots from distance, you know, what you don't want is to allow a midfielder to be able to run 10, 15 yards because you're dropping deeper and deeper and then have a shot and it goes in because then you just like a complete mug. So they have to come out and and try and close him down, which for, which 
brings out the space. So I thought Coney did that well yesterday. Um, but, you know, just don't be late is kind of a yeah. simple, simple answer, right? Yeah. The other thing, the other thing that um, kind of occurred to me really is uh, I, I completely agree. We do have a little bit of a headache with some of the wide players. Um, and I replied to the Watford way this morning on, on Twitter um, when they were when they were talking about how you had loser Ince and Healy on the bench, and, and it just felt like a game for Tom Ince to come into. I think in that situation, after about sixty minutes, you could tell what Huddersfield were going to do. Mm. So, I think you could have potentially sacrificed one of the sort of you could have sacrificed. I think Kayembe yesterday, and yeah. you know maybe gone to a four-two-three-one, put Aspria in the middle, and bring Tom Ince on just to just to you know have a few more forward thinking players on the pitch um because if anybody was going to be able to score a goal or create a chance really out of nothing i think yesterday it might have been someone like tom ince um yeah. with the experience in the, in the league just to be able to t- 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 sort of pop up and, and do something um so i think you know a little bit of tactical um uh tactical inflexibility from from ismail yesterday um maybe it was our undoing but um if he'd have done that and Huddersfield went up the end and scored a winner then it'd have been a different conversation but yeah anyway so um yes uh relatively happy with the uh the starting uh 11 yesterday yeah yeah I think uh yesterday was probably the game for Tom Ince isn't it because he you know he's very experienced he's a, he's a bit more used to these rugged defenses that sit in and don't move so I think he would he would be the one that could maybe go outside of the game plan to uh, to create something, knowing that he has that kind of flexibility in, in his experience to to create something. Whereas I think somebody who's younger, like uh, like your Aspria, like your like your Kone and and the like, they're they're more interested in sticking to the plan and pleasing the manager and and doing what. What needs to yeah. not what needs to be done, but what is what is asked of them? Um, whereas maybe yesterday he needed that sort of uh, player who could create something which didn't come off the training ground. If uh, if you get on, no, yeah, that's, yeah, that's not I, to say I, that I those get... players don't have the the quality. Um, but I think yeah. somebody like Tom Ince, who's very experienced, maybe could have influenced the game. Uh, in a, in a more positive way, but yeah, like you said, I think it's a, a bit of uh, inflexibility mm. from from Ishmael to want to change the plan, and I can't blame him for for not wanting to do that because I I think it can lead to being quite confusing uh, for players. I think when when we change system against yeah. Leeds, we got absolutely bullied all over the park. So when mm-hmm. you're keeping the uh, the system the same, just for familiarity and uh, for people to to keep learning because it, it's still a new system for these players. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think it's uh, overall it was. You can't blame him for uh, you can't blame him for not wanting to switch. Um, if you get me, no, a bit be- of a long window way of saying that. No, no, no. I I also agree with you on that one because I I think it's working right. Yeah, we're yeah. five games unbeaten. We're five games unbeaten, and three of those games have been away from home, and we've kept clean sheets in two of those games. Three, um, three of those games. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Um, so so the 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 system is working to an extent, and I think this might be sort of the the point that we come onto at the end, just at about the final third, really, but. I, I think yeah, if you're Ismail, you just you're just trying to drill in this this ma- mindset, and mentality, and style of play. Um, so yeah, I don't, I wouldn't have necessarily seen him uh, changing um, drastically from from the off today. Uh, but maybe as we got later on in in the game, something needed to be done. But yeah, yeah um, you know, I, we, we started off by saying it was a bit of a dull game, and it was a dull game. Uh, I suppose, really, for me, I'm choosing to stay more on the side of optimism simply because um, even the the best teams will sometimes just have a game where it just doesn't come off for them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so uh, maybe this is one of those where it's not too high, not too low type um, takes on, on the game for me. We didn't play particularly well. Um, 
but uh you know sometimes it's just not really gonna not really gonna go for you um but that will be a different picture if if we don't go into rotherham next week and uh, and and beat them yeah yeah i think what what we can take from uh, from the Huddersfield game and and maybe even the Millwall game and, and pretty much every other game in this season, James. And I do want to mm. get your uh, opinion on this because um, I feel like there are, at times is no real plan in, in the final third. And I know we've had a little bit of a brief time yeah. before on the pod, but I do feel like sometimes when a when a defense is just tuned to sit in and and not move like they did against Hull- like Huddersfield were yesterday yeah maybe some structure to what happens in the final third maybe we we target overlapping wing backs and and get the ball right into the box stand the ball up on top of the keeper for for Rivic to get in there or maybe we yeah. try and pull back to the edge of the box and, and work on something like that where the ball doesn't sort of sit around the edge of the box and then a fullback has a shot, which is not what anyone wants to see, really. Um, but yeah, what? Hmm. why do you think we struggle so much in the final third, James? I think... Uh, so if, I think this is the thing that's killing this team so far this season um, is just our lack of incisiveness and intensity in that, in that final third when we attack. I... I really agree with you when you talk about we are, we either need to have a concerted plan and we just stick to that um or i just want to see a bit more variety in that final third um too yeah too many times it feels like we're we're passing the ball around the outside of the box to make that guilt-edged opportunity um which is fine but when it breaks down or if it's continuously not working, we need to just be able to shake it up and do something different. And I think that's that's what I want to see a bit more of is don't be afraid to stand the ball up to the back post and then the next time fizz one right across the face of goal. There was so many times yesterday and for me, Lewis was really guilty of this is he was putting cross into the box and they were almost like a semi cut back to the edge of the area, mm. which... I didn't really understand that when you've got players like Bio and um, uh, Ryovic later on in the game in in the box, because even if you're doing sort of a percentages type thing, if you if you whip a ball in towards that six yard box, either we'll get a header hopefully on goal, or we'll we'll create a chance on target, or a defender will have to deal with that ball, which may be a corner, go out for a throw in, maybe sort of a, a nod back to the edge of the box where we've got players attacking the edge of the area or a goalkeeper is going to have to come out and try and deal with it which may lead to a mistake a fumble and you know I feel like if we're just trying to cut this ball back to the edge of the area we're cutting out some of those obvious potential mistakes yeah. or, or panic that, that that causes so I think sometimes we're, we're not particularly street smart in our way of playing football in, in, that, in that moment if you want to sound like a continental manager um yeah so yeah i think really what we struggle is is intensity in that final third and sometimes i think you just got to um really back a plan and get after it and if that's uh, you have a fullback overlapping and you just pass that ball whilst they're at full tilt because it just causes panic and confusion and sometimes sometimes you know the best thing you can do is just put something on target because you don't know what what could happen. I think we're trying to be too clever at the moment, and um, we're just not delivering on that uh, at the uh, in at this at this time. Yeah, yeah, and I think we we've always said about having more shots um, from those players, yeah. and and I think Kony was the only one that really did that yesterday. Take a player on, buy himself a yard of space, and shoot. And Kony is really not the guy that you want to be doing that, which is what. Oh, at the moment. It frustrated me about Chat for Tazzy yesterday. I think the game was just there for him to run at the defence and have shots, really. They, yeah. they were really just sort yeah, of yeah. standing there like mannequins for a lot of the game. And it kind of showed the, the reaction of the Huddersfield fans whenever they went on the counter-attack and he, the ball went in our half. I think it was just... It was crazy. <laughs> I, couldn't be- yeah. I couldn't believe it. And But really, it was just crying out for someone, even Martins, to just have a run at the defence and have a shot. 
cut in, yeah. cut in off the left and have a shot. And and that's what frustrates me. I think there's a, just a bit of naivety, which uh, which leads to poor decision making uh, all mm-hmm. across the pitch, but particularly mm-hmm. in uh, in the attack. And and to be fair, that's where we have a lot of younger players, which you can't really blame them because they're not. Maybe some of them aren't used to having to play against that for for ninety minutes. Um, there's a there's a variety of reasons which could uh, could in, influence your decision making. Maybe maybe I mean we don't know how much football players see the social media side of things. So I think there's there's got to be some sort of a desire to to not mess up to yeah. to not receive a lot of hate on social media and and maybe that's even influencing Ishmael's decisions um, because like, he's not yeah. going to want to change stuff which is not necessarily working but it's not going badly wrong like five unbeaten is is solid three clean sheets um yeah you know it's not it's not terrible is it so no and it's a and it's a committed style of play which is what we've been crying out for for the last two or three seasons yeah and and you know we are now going into games knowing what sort of football we're going to see and how we're going to um, and how we're going to try and win games of football. We're yeah. starting to see the fullbacks coming inside a bit more now, yeah, which is yeah. what we saw at the start of the season. So that that style of play is starting to be implemented. And and you know, uh, when it works, a la Millwall, it looks really good and it's enjoyable. And sometimes we're going to overplay and it's not going to quite come off, uh, and it's going to be a frustrating watch like yesterday. Um, so yeah, um, I think uh, I'm with you on that one. Um, sometimes. We just have to kind of go with it, and the players at least are sticking to it to the plan, yeah, which is what you yeah, want. Yeah, and I think that shows the sort of respect that they still have for Ishmael, which is you know really positive. Mm. I don't think that that respect was there for the past two or three mm. years, which kind of shows this sort of the sense of uh, a uh, a change in mindset around the club, which uh, is mm. is very positive. Right, uh, James, I think it is time. For the second oh, clue yes. of the day, and um, yeah, pen it ready. This uh, this this clue might give you a bit more of a bit more of a hint to who the player is. Hopefully, um, okay, so yeah, I like it. This player has been at their current club for ten years and has racked over three hundred appearances in that time. Oh my god! Current club, ten years. Ten years. Ten years and three up three hundred appearances in that time. Yeah. Over three hundred appearances, and they made their debut with us. So hold on, they've been there for three. So this person moved to that club in in twenty twenty thirteen. Is that what I'm hearing? They moved to their current club. Ten years. Oh, oh. I'm not confirming or denying anything here. Well, I'm just doing my maths. So they made their debut for Watford in that season with Sean Dyche. Oh, I think I might know. I, oh, okay. I think I might know who it could. It might be actually, and it, it, this could be this could be one of those that does it link to maybe the opposition we played yesterday. I uh, I actually cannot confirm or deny that. Okay, so this person made their debut on the. 29th of August. They've been at their current club for 10 years, over 300 appearances. Ned, is it Jonathan Hogg? It is indeed Jonathan Hogg, yes. <laughs> yes. Two, two points for James on the, the first week. And uh, oh. I thought you might have got it after that one, but just in case you didn't, the final clue would have been that this player was part of one of the most influential Watford moments of all time. So uh, if you didn't <laughs> get it, then... I would have been oh. asking some serious question marks over your credibility to to be on a Watford podcast. Yeah, I'm pleased. So that's a big two points for me. Two points. So I'm currently two two nothing up. And next week I'm going to come back at you with another player. Yeah, I would just like to say be nice because you can go back a bit further than I can. <laughs> so if you're picking uh, okay. Gift and Noel Williams, then there's not really a chance I'll be able to. Hey, what a player! I'm not going to work out any clues for that though, am I? So okay, all right, fine. <laughs> be nice. Maybe not. Be nice, please. All right. Okay. But yeah. All right. Sweet. Two 0 to me. Excellent. Get in there. Um. So, <laughs> do you have any uh, any thoughts on uh, from Huddersfield or going into Rotherham? Um. Obviously, we've uh, we've discussed it. 
the next four or the next three now in in the last podcast have uh have any yeah. of those uh picks for how many points will get changed for you james or are you still sticking with uh uh well i i, I don't think we get i don't think we get to that 10 point mark now because I, we really needed to beat huddersfield oh, yeah, yesterday um now. yeah so um well, i think i've kind of set out my store i will be in a slightly different mindset if we don't beat Rotherham next Saturday, yeah. looking at their results and how they're going at the moment, um, not uh, not particularly good news for them. Um, but they did manage to come back and get a draw against QPR yesterday. So, no, I don't think so. Um, if I'm being honest, I can't really see the starting 11 change, barring any more disciplinary issues. Um, I think Jeremy... Ngakia was okay. Um, weirdly, I don't necessarily think he did enough to be sort of dropped because I think the whole team's performance wasn't particularly yeah, yeah. good and def- defensively it was part of a clean sheet. So I think Ngakia stays in the starting 11. Um, I What I just want to see is, as we've spoken about, is a little bit more incisiveness in that final third, really. Yeah. And sort of going for it a bit more and I I think we probably will do that I don't see Rotherham necessarily coming out super aggressive against us um so yeah uh I I don't see the starting 11 changing too much um although I would be relatively content if Martins or um Ince came into the the starting eleven somewhere. Um, I'd be I'd be kind of happy with that. Um, so 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 yeah. Uh, I'm still relatively confident that if we get a good result against Rotherham, we're we're still teed up to go into Leicester and Norwich with with some confidence, and then we can really give Leicester a, a decent go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you know we're not in particular. Uh, sort of need of desperate need of a point looking at where we are in the table yeah but uh but a win against, a win against Rotherham moves us to 21 points and I think that'll probably take us to sort of mid-table um looking at some of the other some of the other yeah. the teams yeah. in the league and uh, yeah we can sort of sort of hopefully kick on from there I would suspect yeah I think 12 to 6 uh as we've referenced to a lot uh is still definitely on the cards for me um I don't mm. think we'd be challenging anywhere higher than that, just because I don't think the squad we have is necessarily good enough to no. get into the playoffs or, or maybe like win the playoffs or whatever. Um, but yeah, 12 to 6 is still on for me. I think there's points we can get pretty much in every sort of block of four games when we discuss it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I don't think there'll ever be a, a time where we're looking at this and going, right, I think we'll get zero points um, out of 12. Mm-hmm. So I think that's that's a positive to take. We'll always just we'll be a bit of a a consistent middle where out of four games we'll be saying we're trying to get seven to nine points. And as long as we're doing that, I think we're finishing in the the upper half of of middle mid, uh, of mid table, which is what uh, I think would be yeah. a, a decently successful season for for us and for this squad. And just there's been a lot of changes yeah. behind the scenes and 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 also. At the, at the at the top end of the club with uh, with Ishmael and, and that um, really being backed, so I think another couple yeah. of windows and and we'd be looking at maybe trying to break into the playoffs and and uh, and go about challenging for for promotion. <laughs> but that's uh, that's a quite way off in the distance at the moment. <laughs> I, I don't want to get hurt of myself. Um, I do want to say though, Leicester did lose on uh, on Friday night, so they are beatable and they are much more vulnerable at home they've lost twice at home now um yeah so yeah we could sneak a, a sneaker a goal and then just do a huddersfield and park everyone behind <laughs> yeah there's every yeah. chance that that 10 points is uh is on, on the cards but yeah I, th- I think like you said uh we really could have done with beating huddersfield for our prediction to uh to to mm. come uh to come true right so and i think oh yeah go on go ahead go ahead well i was i was just going to try and close i was just going to close off actually by by sort of saying i think the majority i would suggest now of what for fans are sort of looking up rather than down oh, the yeah. table is the table is is looking 
a bit more um, sort of developed than it was sort of five games ago. Um, you, a lot of people would talk about, you know, are there three worst teams than us in, in the league? And I think you can hands down say that there are absolutely three teams uh, worse than us in the league um, so far this season. So, yeah, I think for us now, it's, it's, it's hopefully just trying to tweak some of those issues that we've spoken about earlier, particularly the final third. And if we can start scoring goals, then I really do believe that the style of play and, and how we approach games, particularly at home, um, will lend us to win more games or pick up more points than, than we than we lose. So, yeah, onwards and upwards, mate. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So, James, this would have been the point where I actually gave you the third clue. But seeing as you've already uh, yeah. aced it and, uh, and given yourself two points, I think we'll, yep. we can have a little chat about the Watford FC women. Um, so mm. they've not been yep. in action for for a while, um, to to say the least. Uh, but they are back yeah. today at home against Crystal Palace. I think this is uh, is going to be a very tough game. Uh, Crystal Palace are fourth in the table at the moment. Um, they're they're looking solid in their last five performances, and and we are the only club in the WSL two that is uh, has lost their last five. And um, mm. I think that <clears throat> it's going to be a tough afternoon for the Golden Girls. But, you know, they beat Charlton and Charlton are second at the moment. So I think there's every possibility that we go out and, and get something from today. Um, but, yeah, I uh, there needs to be something. I think there needs to be something for the Golden Girls to cling on to and, and build some momentum from. Uh, I don't know about you. James. Yeah. No, it's starting to get into um, uh, relegation fight territory for us now. London City unhelpfully got a win in the last last time out, so you know it's it's a four point gap between eleventh and tenth, and uh, yeah, we're in real bad form. But uh, you know what what we can say is we're scoring goals at least, so that's that's always a bonus compared to to Lewis who are. Uh, Beneath us, have only scored three goals all season in nine. So, um, I think yeah, serious, I suspect, though. sadly for us, it's going to be a tough one this this afternoon against Palace. Um, but uh, hopefully, uh, we can pick up some points in the in the coming games against the teams in and around us, which will hopefully uh, move us up the table uh, and uh, give us the opportunity to extend the league more season. Yeah, yeah, I think that's got to be the. Uh... the the goal for the season right i think we're trying to you know just sort of stay away from uh from relegation and then and then look to build on the squad and hopefully some more funding mm-hmm. from the club will, will go into to the women's side but i think we've got a real player in carly johns she scored a lot of goals this season already um and uh, yeah i think that she could be the a kind of very very valuable asset come the end of the season for for you know, potentially building a squad around her to uh, to stay in the, in the WSL two, or if we do unfortunately get relegated, then you know you're looking at moving her on for a, for a good fee, and then uh, and then building the squad mm. for the for the national league again. But you know we're we're trying to be positive as we usually are um, on the mm. podcast as, as much as we can be. Um, yeah. But yeah, hopefully they uh, they can maybe get something from today's game and build a little bit of momentum but uh yeah hopefully we're looking for some goals from from Carly today and uh yeah bit of a uh, bit of bit of form to be put together so yeah uh anything to add James before we close up the pod uh no just um uh thanks to everyone that, that keeps uh, keeps listening uh, it really is much appreciated and uh, if you have anything that you want us to, to talk about or discuss on the pod please don't uh, hesitate to, to drop us a line uh, we're on on socials on YouTube uh, whatever however you get um, uh, our podcast uh, just drop a line in there and, and, and have a chat with us we'd be more than happy to uh, more than happy to discuss it if it's something you want to hear about so yeah mm. um, that's all I had to say mate uh, I'm beaten in five. Hopefully, I'm beating in six uh, with three more points next weekend. Yeah. Um, who lo- who doesn't love championship football? <laughs> for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, guys, thank you so much for listening to this week's podcast. And uh, as I said before, if you played along with guessing the player, 
please let us know how many points you got this week and uh, keep a tally for the remainder of the season and you can see how you fare up against myself and <laughs> James come the end of the season. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening um, and we will see you again very soon. Hopefully after three points against Rotherham. Take care, guys. Come on, you want it. <laughs>